welcome to the Lightroom. I'm super glad to have you here. If this is your first time tuning into my channel, you are welcome. I'm super glad that you are here once again. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And then hit the notification bell so you can get a pop-up anytime I put up a new video, which is every week. Like this video and share this with someone that would need what I'm about to share. <laughs> okay. Uh, what am I talking about today? Mm. I was having a conversation with someone. Actually, I've had this conversation with several people. But it made me remember a phase of my life. And I'm going to talk about it today. So last year, before I got married, my husband and I were in a long-distance relationship. It wasn't... It, it wasn't fun. <laughs> I mean, we still loved each other so much in that period. We got married, we loved each other, and the distance was kind of necessary. It was actually necessary at that point. So I'll be sharing what I learned from that period. And I want to answer the question, is long distance worth it? If you're in a long distance relationship, is it worth the sacrifice? Should you break up? Should you move on? I kind of feel like I've given some disclaimers because I already mentioned that my husband and I were in a long-distance relationship. But I'll just go ahead and talk about it. So I'll give you the background to why my husband and I were in a long-distance relationship. In February, we got engaged. And then in April, he had to relocate to UAE because of a job opportunity, he got there. He was working in the same company in Nigeria, then he got um, an opportunity to come to the UAE. We prayed about it. We were certain that this is what he should be doing right now. And he made the move. So <laughs> we had gotten engaged at this time. It was a good move for us, futuristically. But I I was in Nigeria at that time. And we had kind of talked about when we wanted to get married. We had agreed that we'll get married in August, which really helped because there was a timeline to it. The long distance was not um, to further notice. There was a timeline. But it was still not easy. It was not a walk in the park for us in that period. So he relocated. And because of the way the move happened it was possible for him to take me along at that time but we were engaged and we had firm boundaries in our relationship so there was no um, premarital sex allowed all those things were just pretty much off the table so relocating with him at that point would have just been too dicey where would I stay if we're staying in separate houses can we afford the bill that would come with that decision. If we are staying in the same house, can we afford the temptation that it will bring her away? I mean, there is no friend to be a chaperone or some form of help when tension is high. And I'm super attracted to my husband. So it just was not a wise decision for us to travel together unmarried <laughs> at that point. So we did not do that. He moved. And we continued our relationship. You know, we we're planning the wedding. And I just want to give a shout out to my husband because he did a bulk of the planning. I, I didn't even know that he could be that intentional with the wedding planning. Because in other cases I had seen, I've seen the bride get stressed out, trying to chase vendors and all of that. But my husband, oh no, he had an entire Excel sheet. He was the planner. I mean, we had a particular friend of ours, Falake do most of the planning and the logistics and we had a group of friends also that helped us but when it came to the most proactive person or the more proactive person between the both of us it was my husband <laughs> he did really well with our wedding planning but that's not what i'm talking about today i'm talking about our long distance relationship so i started now 
I said, <laughs> we had been dating. So we started a long distance relationship. The day I escorted him to the airport, oh my God, I cried like a child. I cried so much. I was just crying. We were not breaking up. Well, I knew when the distance was going to end, but I was just crying because I had gotten so used to being in the same space with him. I work remotely. And even at that time, I was working remotely. So sometimes I'll come over to his place and work from there. We could hang out together during weekends as well. So I had gotten used to him being in my space. So having him relocate, I can't just wake up and decide to work from his house. I can't decide to go on a date with him during the weekend. It was just difficult for me to accept at that point in time. So I cried a lot in the airport. At some point, I even had to go to the bathroom because I was an entire mess. I was just crying and crying. And he was just looking at me like he could not do anything. He could not cancel the flight or anything like that. So he was just looking at me like, sorry, you know, I'll be back soon, all of that. <laughs> this was April, early April, late March. And he came back, I think, five months after that. So it was like five months of distance. I would say the most difficult thing for us then was okay there were a couple of diff difficult things but one of the most difficult things for us then was the lack of physical presence so in that period I discovered that I actually really like quality time I can just be in the same space with you we don't have to talk about anything we can just exist in the same space you know and we couldn't really have that with long distance at least it's not the same way if we are going to do that with long distance we have to keep our phones up and that's data that's credits burning you know it's not the same thing if we're in the same space i could just watch him react to something we could watch a movie together we don't have to talk right i could just enjoy his presence so we didn't have as much of that during our long distance relationship and it was a bit difficult for me to get used to then there was a time zone difference, which was just a lot. My 8 a.m. is his 11 a.m. So when I'm waking up and trying to, you know, figure out what I'm going to do during the day, he's already deep in his day. So it was, it took some time to get used to that. Another thing was, I don't know, <laughs> let me tell you a funny story <laughs> um, on my birthday. I'm going, to, I'm going to ask him if I can share this. If you see this in the video, just know that I asked him already. So my birthday, which was after he had traveled, he asked me um, how my day went. He, he wished me happy birthday and all of that. And um, just before we were about to go up the call, he asked me, babe, do you think we need therapy? And I went, yeah? Where is this coming from? I had a good day. Why are you talking about therapy? In my head, therapy was a bad thing. Like, I know hypothetically that it's good. But hearing someone tell me or ask me if I or if we needed therapy, I'm like, what is going on? Are we sick? Is something bad happening? And everything. And I also said, I'm like, babe, what do you mean? How do you say we need therapy? What are you trying to insinuate? Are we not happy? And things like that. I'm like, oh, no. I... I'm not unhappy with you. I just feel, you know, some things could be better with how we communicate with long distance. You know, things have changed with the dynamics in our relationship. Do you think we need therapy to just help us do better going forward? Maybe his choice of words were wrong. Till today, we still kind of banter about it. Or maybe the timing was just off. He could have told me on the 18th of April, or on the 20th of April, but not on the 19th of April. I don't know. But something about that conversation just sent me down a spiral. So it was just difficult, you know, communicating some things or even communicating the best way with long distance. If we had that conversation in person, I would have been able to read his body language. I would have been able to see that this person is not trying to pick up an argument with me or point accusing fingers at me or anything. If we were in the same space, he would have probably held my hand while asking me that question and then lovingly explain what he means. But this is over a phone. It was not even a video call at that time. So I couldn't see his I couldn't see his face. I couldn't, you know, um, 
read his body language perfectly. So it just, <laughs> it was not a fun conversation. But on the bright side, long distance kind of helped us. I mean, we're already engaged and I'm very attracted to my husband. We're very attracted to each other. So, I mean, tension. <laughs> I told you that there are boundaries in our relationship. So you know how when you restrict yourself from doing something, that thing feels more appealing to you in that moment. Maybe when you're on a diet, you suddenly start craving ice cream more than usual. Mm -hmm. That's how it was for us having boundaries in a relationship. So tension was high, you know. Having a long distance relationship helped us manage boundaries. That was one good thing that came out from a long distance relationship. So whether we liked it or not, we had to continuously do things to improve our relationship that had nothing to do with physical touch. And I would say it was helpful for the both of us because we got to um, just question some things in our relationship, question the ways we communicate, question several things around our relationship, and we came out better. But... The fact that it worked for us does not mean it would necessarily work for you. Now, it worked for us in a different context. We were already engaged. We knew the time that we were going to be apart, so it was bearable. But some people enter long-distance relationships not knowing they will ever see each other again, not knowing if this is what the long haul, you know. So I just have some questions to ask you to help you figure out, is this something you want to do? Is this something that you can do? You know, is it worth it to go on this long distance journey? So there are some factors to consider. Why does this long distance exist? For us, it was work and settling down. You know, a work opportunity came. It was in line with every other thing he was doing with his life and it was a good opportunity. We had sought counsel. We had prayed about it. So he went. You know, it was a good thing. It was work. And it was possible for me to come over. That's another thing to consider. At the end of the long distance, was he going to come back or was I going to join him? You know, So that was something we prayerfully considered as well. So it could be work. It could be greener pastures. It could be the leadings of God. It could be school. How did I even mention school? School is so popular. So when you figure out, why this long distance is going to exist in the first place. It just kind of helps you weigh your options. So if it's school, are you willing to wait seven years, six years, five years, depending on the course of study, are you ready to wait this long to reunite with this person? If you're ready to wait this long, are you willing to put in the work that it would take for this relationship to work? Because trust me, it's different from when you see somebody every day. It's, it's more difficult. You can't hug this person. You can't be in their space, you know, it takes a different level of trust and accountability to have a long distance relationship because you, you only have that person's words to bank on. You can't see who they're with. You don't know who they're talking to. And I'm not saying that when you have a close proximity kind of relationship, then you should be a monitoring spirit. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying the dynamics are so different in a long distance relationship. When we, were, we had that phase, we had to be extra clear in communicating. So if I, if I bumped into a male friend during the day, I would explain, I would shallay every single part of our conversation. I would like, oh, this is what he said. And I will specify, we hugged goodbye. We waved goodbye. You know, all those specifics because he's not there in the moment. So telling him the specifics just helps him trust me even more, even though we didn't have trust issues in our relationship. We didn't want to start having trust issues in our relationship. So that's one thing we did. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I said I was going to share certain questions with you. Um, should I? Okay. <laughs> the questions. So one, how much are you willing to give for this relationship to work? Are you willing to relocate with this person in the near future? Are you willing to wait for the person to come back? You know, how much are you willing to give to just make this relationship work? Is a question you have to ask yourself. 
Then the second question is, what impact would this have on my future? And this is a question that the both of us had to you know, really think about because we're not just people that we're trying to chase um, a good career. We have other more important things in our life. We have ministry, we have family, we have ourselves, you know, so we had to consider what does this move do to these other phases and departments of our life? How does this affect ministry for us in this phase of our lives? How does this affect our families? These are things that we have to pray about, we have to be sure about, because you don't want to be in a situation where you move when God doesn't want you to move. You know, not every good opportunity is for you. Trust me, not every good opportunity is for you to walk into. And I know you may feel like you are, you know, missing out of something if you do not go somewhere that God has asked you not to go. But trust me, you are safer in God's will than in your own plans. So prayerfully consider the steps you're about to take and realize that it's the God that loves you, that leads you. So if he tells you, Ngechi, don't move. Trust him and don't move. You want to really weigh the impact of this decision on your own life. If you are not dating this person seriously, in fact, you should not be dating anybody that you don't see a future with, someone that you don't envision yourself getting married to. You're wasting your time. You shouldn't do that to yourself. You should date people with marriage in view, especially as a believer. Your life is finite. You don't live forever on this side of the earth or on this side of eternity. So you need to treat your life with value. The people you spend time with matter. So you should not be in a relationship where two of you have different expectations. Maybe this person never plans to get married. You plan to get married, and then you people are just existing in the relationship before this long-distance decision comes to meet you. Before you start dating somebody, you should kind of have the same trajectory. You know, there may be different opinions you guys have on the subject matter but at least there should be common ground you know so you need to weigh what impact does this decision have on me then another question to ask is this distance tenured would it end in two years would it end in five years would it end in ten years how long is this long distance define it i was listening to one of my friends talk she, she is in a long-distance relationship and she has been in a long-distance relationship for a while. And she was talking about it and she said, long-distance is hard. While her relationship is beautiful and it's blossoming, she said she wouldn't advise anybody to walk into a long-distance relationship because it is hard. If she had a way, they would not be in a long-distance relationship, but like the circumstances are just you know beyond both of them at the moment. So... It's not some. It's not a walk in the park if it's going to work. You have to think about it. I don't know how else to define or describe how difficult long distance can be to you, especially if you have never been in that situation before or if you are just about to enter, but it's, it's difficult. Then another question you need to ask, um, is there a solid plan for your relationship to grow during this long distance? So are there structures for you guys to evaluate is this relationship moving forward is it is it suffering do you guys have a plan don't just know your travel dates know what you're going to do to ensure that this relationship does not die during the long distance account accountability will help if you've listened to tlr videos enough you would have heard this word accountability so many times because it saves lives so accountability would help you you know a solid plan would help you your plan could be i would call you Immediately I wake up and we would have a call just before bedtime. That will work, especially if you guys work, wake up at the same time and if you guys are within the same time zone, things like that. It doesn't make sense that you guys are going to enter a long distance relationship and you don't even know the time zone difference. That's failure. <laughs> because you don't want to be calling that person by 3 a.m. when they are sleeping and it's your 8 a.m. or something. You know, you need to be considerate of that person as well because you don't want time zone to now be a source of arguments. First one has to argue with you. Then why are you not considerate? Why are you always calling me when I'm sleeping? And you, you'll be like, don't you see that I love you? I'm calling you once I wake up in the morning. You know, you guys have different views and rightly so. Have a plan. Have a structured plan. But I'll tell you, 
a long distance relationship can work. It's not impossible, but you need to be able to weigh your options in this situation. You need to know, is it worth it for me in this phase? Can I bear a two year long distance relationship in this two years? What would I do to make this relationship work? Is my partner willing to make this relationship work? Because it's one thing that you, you are willing. If your partner is not willing, you'll be so frustrated. Because there are times where you'll be tired and you're not in the mood for a call. You want to sleep. But seeing that your partner is lovingly reaching out in that period, your partner is lovingly meeting you where you are in that period, will just help you have some hope in your relationship. Okay? There are some pros in long distance, especially for believers. See, it will help you with congee. I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's, <laughs> it will really, 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 really help. Weigh your options, guys. Seek counsel. Sometimes you really need a bird's eye view on your situation. Someone that is outside your situation to help you see Clara. So can a long distance relationship work? Is it worth it? It depends. It varies per person. I don't regret that phase of our lives. And thankfully, we are no longer in a long-distance relationship. I mean, we live together now and we are married. And I'm grateful that we came through that phase and that season of our lives. And if you'd like to reach out to us or you'd like to um, ask questions that are specific to your situation and I have not addressed already in this video, please feel free to do so. You can reach me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is underscore Chisum Olusonia. So feel free, buzz me, send me a DM, ask me a question, and I'll answer you to the best of my ability. If you're in a long distance relationship in this moment, I wish you grace and peace and all the strength you need to make the right decisions. I'm rooting for you and I want you to just share in the comment section if this helped you. I want to know how uh, this resonated with you. And I want to just leave a comment on, on what this video did for you or means to you right now in the comment section. And I want you to share this with someone that just might need to hear all I've shared so far. Thank you again for tuning in to my YouTube channel. If you have not subscribed already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so more people can see so that you can also get notifications when I put up new videos. I put up new videos every week. So, I have come to the end of this episode. I'll see you in my next episode. Bye!